Skyward Sword, a video game, no doubt about it. And because it's a video game, uh, a HD remaster. Beautiful. Hello, Chester here with CMB, whatever. Now today I'm supposed to be talking about Persona 5 Scramble, but Skyward Sword HD released and my brain was like, ooh, shiny. And it's all I've been playing recently. Don't worry, Scarlet Nexus, I'll come back to you. Maybe. Probably not. I'm not going, I'm not going to. So like many of you all, I heard Skyward Sword was coming out and rushed off to pre-order it. Dumb thing is, I'm not a Zelda fan, not really, but for someone who doesn't like Zelda, I do seem to keep buying them and giving them a go. So here are the titles I've played and most definitely have not finished. So Ocarina of Time, both on N64 and 3DS, a tiny bit of Majora's Mask on N64, as a kid I was a bit too scared to play it, so I didn't play much of it. Link's Awakening on the Switch, Twilight Princess for the Wii and Wii U, Wind Waker for the Wii U, and now Skyward Sword for both the Wii and Switch. Oh yeah, and I played like two hours of the original game because everyone has to at some point. And of course, I have actually completed Breath of the Wild because it was the only game on Switch. Now that most likely fits me squarely in the casual zone, but hey, if the glove fits, don't I don't know, take it off. But hey, I hope no one can say I haven't given the series a chance. I've given it like nine chances at this point. I didn't give Sonic or COD that many chances and that's a series I'm also not a fan of. But there's something that always pulls me back to the Zelda franchise and that's entirely because of this game, Skyward Sword. Another Zelda game that I never finished, but boy howdy it left an impression on me. Hey, look at my hands. Oh, oh nothing up my sleeve. <laughs> And there you go, Zelda, the video game. So I pre-ordered the normal version of this game, the plain old tip-top white bread edition, and they gave me a metal copy. They also somehow doubled up my pre-order, but anyway, like, I like metal cases, okay? Like, it's, it's, it's cool. I can put it next to, I don't, know, I don't know, I don't have my copy of Persona 5 at the moment, so that's the only metal copy I have, so yeah. Metal, I like it. Problem is, they also gave me a normal one. So what do I do with this? Ah, finally. A place to put has-been heroes. Or as I like to call it, a scam. Because you bastards put an iOS game on the Switch and sold it day one. Okay, so as a graphic designer, this logo hurts me, angers me, and saddens me all at the same time. I've never felt this many emotions. What? Why? What? <laughs> <laughs> Who did this? I'm, I'm taking your Creative Cloud subscription away, okay? I bet you exported it at like 72-bit or some shit too. Why, why is it like this? Why is it a different gradient to this? Why is the sizing so wonky? Everything else has a bit of like a tilt to it, but this is straight as a board. It makes everything feel lopsided. I, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Like if I saw this on Reddit or something, I wouldn't even give it a second thought. I'd immediately think it was fake because... What, look, look at it, you've taken some stock image of Skyward Sword, taken a PNG of the logo and slapped on HD in a similar enough font and added a blue gradient because, well, the sword is blue and the sky is blue, it was meant to be. Anyway, enough of the cover, just to put away your diploma. <laughs> I haven't got it yet. So when Skyward Sword first released, I was 10 years old and was obsessed with this game. I was so hyped for it, which was weird because once again, I didn't like Zelda games because they were puzzle games and I was a brick of a child, fit for climbing trees and not much else. But I was so excited. Enter Skyward Sword into my life. Now this game was a pain. Firstly, it was $100 here in Australia. You have any ideas how many wombats I had to race to earn that many bottle caps? Like two. And then my dad bought it for me anyway. And then I got it. And none of my controllers worked for it. So I had to go out and buy a controller with Wii Motion Plus. Because the EB Games near me was all sold out of the little add-on thing. So I had to buy the full remote. And yeah, well, Wii remotes were pricey back then. Anyway, very drawn out process, which I'm still salty about now. Like, how do you not stock a heap of those add-ons? The game body will needs them. I ended up having some weird knockoff brand with Wii Remote with motion control stuff plus built in. Well, I don't know, it's a spun! Anyway, got the game and who boy, it was a magical experience. So I started the game and immediately fell in love with Zelda. I'll admit it, I was 10. This game instantly sold me on her and Link. I loved it. I loved their interactions. I would literally push through the dungeons and puzzles that before I would have given up on because I wanted to see more scenes with her and Link. I loved it. I loved Groose. I loved the city. I didn't have any problems with controls. It was an amazing time and 
absolutely sold me on the experience. Not the series, but the game itself. But then some slight problems emerged. Now, as I said, Chester, 10, sharp as a brick. I hated reading. I was bad at it, slow at it, and I only read when I absolutely had to. And there was so much reading. Constant reading. I could power my way through early game because, well, Zelda. But as soon as Fee came around, I just couldn't do it. I wanted to go on the adventures. I wanted to go find Zelda, but I had to keep talking to people and it really started to slow the game down for me. That's one of the remake's best improvements, personally. The slimming down of the opening segment and reduction of general interaction with Fee. I'm not a Fee hater, but it would get pretty annoying when she would just pop up every three minutes. It's just... <laughs> It's the same reason I never finished Nino Kuni, despite how much I enjoyed it back then. I just wasn't a strong enough reader for a long, long time. Then, once again, sharp as a tree. Puzzles. Me no do puzzles, good luck. Me, me punch puzzle. Only option. Rarely works, unless I hit it harder. I would get stuck a lot, and it would drag the experience more. Basically, the further I got away from Zelda and the main story, the harder it was for me to keep going. And eventually, I stopped. But unlike nearly any other game I didn't finish, and like no other Zelda game, I still loved it. It was an experience that stayed with me. It was the first game which story sold me on everything. It was the first game I played to have characters who I truly liked and wanted to see more of. And it was the only time in the entire Zelda franchise where I actually felt like Link was an extension of myself. Blank enough for me to live through, but with enough quirks so he wasn't just annoying like in every other Zelda game known to man. So it was an experience that stuck with me all the way till early 2020 when I rebought the game in an attempt to see how the game stood up to my memory of it. So you're probably thinking, come on Chester, this is all just nostalgia at work. But eh, not really. I was playing the N64 Zelda games way before this and still during this. I was always playing Ocarina of Time or something like that, yet it never had the same impact on me. Skyward Sword was a home run for me. I just wasn't old enough to really finish it. I played Twilight Princess at the same time. I was playing Majora's Mask around the same time. This was when I was first getting into gaming and had all my siblings' old consoles and games to play. I was experiencing the Zelda series at around the same time and I had no connection with any of those games. So I don't believe it's just nostalgia for this game. It was just that Skyward Sword actually connected with me, told a story I cared about with characters I liked in a world I adored. I just wasn't old enough for it, really. So anyway, I rebought the game in 2020. First thing I would like to point out that everyone has been moping about the price of this game. Yeah, yeah, a HD remaster with a whole new control scheme, newly implemented free camera movement, improved visuals, slimmed down dialogue, huge bloat cutting and general life improvements isn't worth $80. I, I, yeah, I can understand that. You think that's pricey? I had to spend $50 to get it for the Wii in 2020 at EB Games. $50. I could have bought like 25 copies of Destiny 1 for that price. Or probably a whole Wii. But anyway, I had to see if the game was anything like I remembered it. And that's when the controls hit me. I wasn't really able to see if the story and characters stood up for me because I had every issue under the sun with the controllers. I entirely blame it on my controller. And not really the game. They're older than any other controller in my house. They're beat up and have been pretty abused over the years. They drop out, I'd be needing to mess around with the batteries to keep a connection, the pointer would drift, <laughs> that still isn't fixed. The buttons were mushy, it would take four or five swings for it to recognize the movement, and even then it would do the wrong one. It wasn't fun. So I traded it back in, feeling unsatisfied. And I bought Animal Crossing with the trading money and remained unsatisfied. I hadn't really gotten my chance to experience the game again. And then the remaster got announced. Hence why you have a non-Zelda fan going out and pre-ordering the latest remake. So there you have it. Skyward Sword, a game I couldn't finish because I was stupid. But now it is 2021 and your boy ain't stupid no more. He's read a Stephen King book or two and a bit of Carl Jung. So now what about it? I'm gonna give it a go. I should probably explain why I'm not a Zelda fan. It's basically a few simple reasons. I don't really like puzzle games. I don't have the right mind for it. Like. Get me to write you a short story and I'll probably write something pretty good. But get me to solve a Rubik's Cube and my mind will explode and the blood won't even be enough to cover all the squares on one side. I don't do puzzles. Like, 
I don't do them well, and I don't enjoy them. I don't get satisfied by completing a puzzle. I get relieved that I don't have to do it anymore. And the problem with puzzle games is there's always another puzzle. Next is the stories, or more importantly, the characters in the stories. I like a tasty story, but most importantly, strong characters. They're the most important part. Now, there is something to be said for the simplicity of the stories in Zelda games. As some guy from Bioshock once said, simplicity is beauty. And I'm down for that, too. I just need more from the characters, and the Zelda series rarely gives me that. I often love the presentation of the world and the zaniness of the side characters, but the main cast rarely does it for me. So yeah, not a Zelda guy. But then there's Skyward Sword. A bit of a black sheep amongst the rest of the series, and that's probably why I like it so much. But that was before. How about now? What are my opinions now? Serious review time. The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword was released in November of 2011 as the crowning jewel of the franchise's 25th anniversary. Critical reception was largely positive, and the game sits at a 93% on Metacritic, but due to finicky required motion controls, repetitive game design, and the game's constant handholding throughout the adventure, Skyward Sword had largely mixed opinions amongst the larger Zelda fanbase. In all fairness, this game was far from the first in the series to stir up negativity. Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, even the NES sequel The Adventure of Link. All of these games and more face some form of controversy from one player or another. No, 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 never mind. Serious review over. Fact of the matter is, I'm not the person you should be listening to about all this. I don't have the knowledge of the Zelda series to give you that type of review. All I can do is complain about the cover art and talk about how bloody stupid people are who complain about the price of this game. Like, if you don't like it, don't buy it. It's just, that's all you can really do. But yeah, Skyward Sword. How have I been going with it? It's actually better than I remembered it being. It has been an absolute joy from start to finish. I've been forcing myself to never look up a guide or anything like that, which in general hasn't been needed. I've been able to work out everything pretty easily, and if I get stuck with something, it's usually because I need to take a step back and look at it again or go to a new room. I've been loving exploring Skyloft and enjoying the different side quests, searching for the goddess cubes, flying through the air, finding different islands, catching bugs. It's the first real time a Zelda game has gotten me fully involved, and it's made me want to give Twilight Princess a go again, and Wind Waker. It's gotten me interested in that series for the first time, and that all comes back to the fact that this is the first Zelda game, back when I was 10 and now, that has properly invested me in the characters and story. It's one of the reasons why I'm pretty excited for Breath of the Wild 2, despite the fact I'm not a big fan of Breath of the Wild 1, it looks like the story is more of an important aspect in this one. I'm just basing that off the first trailer we've gotten, which is a lot more creepy and all that type of thing. It feels a little bit more story orientated. I really do hope that that's continued on, even though I do wish that we were playing as Zelda, because I don't care about Link at all. Like, let me play a character who has a personality. I've been really loving the experience, and I hope that does translate back to the rest of the series for me. And that's, that, that's it. That's been my experience. It's a dope game, and has been improved in just about every meaningful way. And I recommend you get it. Literally the only bad part of the experience has been the fact that you have to hold down a button to move the camera. But after an hour, it feels pretty normal. So, eh, you get used to it. There you go. Review over! Hey, it's me Chester, how you doing? Welcome to the end of the video. That was a bit of a different one to how I normally do, it was a bit more impromptu. I kind of turned it over a lot quicker than I typically would and there was less moving parts. It's nice doing a video in like a short amount of time, it's nice. Uh, this isn't the typical type of video I do, I usually do a much more essay format type of stuff. This was just more of a, I, was, I wanted to talk about Skyward Sword, I was seeing a lot of negativity about it, I wanted to share a bit of love for it and just talk about how much I was enjoying the process without committing to the whole review process. Because as I said, I'm not really the right person to be doing all that. There are people who have more experience with the series, and if they don't like it, then that probably means a bit more than me liking it as someone who doesn't know very much about the series. So it's that type of stuff. It's the reason why I didn't do a review on Breath of the Wild when it came out. I'm just not the right person for all that. But once again, just thank you uh, heaps to Who Needs Normal for his little uh, little history bit there in the video. It was actually quite helpful, actually. It gave a good kind of centering for the, the game and all that. I found it quite helpful. And of course, thank you so much to Spixie Cafe for the wonderful artwork. Anyway, I'll catch you at some other point. Bye.